All right, another video of me changing the piston rings, all my piston rings in a 2007 Mini Cooper. That's a, an R56 motor. Uh, the engine code, I believe, is N12 something. Uh, it's a dual overhead cam, continuously variable intake and exhaust. Uh, to, just to let you know, the problem with these motors, and I think the turbo one has the same problem, it might even be worse, is this timing uh, chain guide wears out. Uh, mine was so bad that the, not only was the plastic on, but aluminum, the aluminum was all gone as well. It was cut off right here. It was just, it was not even, it was nowhere to be found actually. Uh, I never did find the pieces. Uh, I did buy the car used. This car has 50,000 miles and it has already suffered basically catastrophic <laughs> engine failure. Um, the tensioner gets weak. Let me show you what the tensioner looks like. Uh, this is the tensioner. That gets weak. That's a new one. It gets weak and there's more slap on the chain, in the chain. That wears out the tensioner guide, which makes the chain even looser. And then it skips a tooth or two on either this gear or that gear. And that causes the valves to hit the pistons. And then if you're really, really lucky, uh, like I was, you can reuse your pistons. Um, I did have a pinched piston ring, so that had to be fixed. I had to clean up the ring groove and file the ring groove uh, because it was pinched. It had been hit so hard by the and so many times by the valves that the top ring groove on the number four cylinder was um, was pinching the ring. In any case, I bought new rings and uh, just changed those, just put the head back together. I'm going to torque the head bolts and put everything back together. I did say earlier that all of the, uh, all of the, what are these things called? Engine brackets, motor mounts. All of the motor mounts, all three pieces on this side had have to be removed. But I have had a change of, uh, no, I haven't. They do have to be removed. I left this one hanging, uh, but it did have to be unbolted. I did take a, uh, down here, there's a bolt for the tensioner guide. And I took that bolt out so that this tensioner guide could move a little bit more. But I don't think that's necessary. So next time I probably won't do that. Next time hopefully it won't be on this car, it'll be on a different car. Uh, I also said uh, optimistically that uh, I thought this job would take me six hours. Uh, that was probably, <laughs> it was definitely being very optimistic. It has taken me most of the day today and I spent probably two hours on it yesterday. So I would say a long day, a long day you can get it done. Um, I unbolted the thermostat housing, took the intake manifold off, took the exhaust manifold off, and now I'm setting the timing. So actually, if you want to know how to set the timing, you can watch this video. Both camshafts have, the, have to have the riding facing up. Then you have the special timing tool that bolts on and locks both camshafts in place. There is a tool that locks the crankshaft in place. And that's the tool. I don't know if you can see it. I think you can. That's this tool, basically the crankshaft is locked in place so that all cylinders are in the middle of their stroke or at 90 degrees and uh, definitely not not top dead center that that's was common on older cars but this car it's uh, the middle of the stroke uh, these move freely right now they're not locked in place the bolt is what locks the cam gears in place before i torque these bolts i will put the tensioner in and tighten it up to the specified torque. In my case, I'll just make it nice and snug. And then I will um, tighten these two um, bolts that uh, lock the cam gears to the camshafts, and that's it for the timing. Uh, it's pretty foolproof as long as you have the the uh, special um, timing timing tool or tools, which basically is this thing two pieces, there's one piece, that's another piece that locks the cam gear, and then the, the piece that locks the crank shaft, which basically is a hole in the uh, bell housing that goes into the, the, 
to the flywheel and locks the crankshaft that way. I did uh, take all the pistons out, so I removed the head, pushed all the pistons out, and in order to remove the head, you have to remove the oil pan, and then you have to remove the oil pump, and then there's another cover that has to be removed, and then you can actually get to the bottom of the connecting rods and unbolt uh, the connecting uh, the caps and push out the the pistons. Uh, I have to tell you that I had really bad rings, a lot of blow by, a lot of oil consumption. When I put the gauges, the feeler gauges on the ring gap, put the rings back in the bore and put the feeler gauges, I had a couple of rings where they were supposed to, I believe they're supposed to be 0 0.012 inches. It's four thousandths per inch and these bore, uh, the bore size is about three inches. 77 millimeters about three inches so that's 0 0.012 the old rings were way 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 uh, there was much bigger gap than that I had actually one that was 0 0.055 and I think the rest of them were really close to 0 0.044 um, right around there again it is supposed to be I believe 0 0.012 I now have 0 0.018 on pretty much all of them, which I think is acceptable. I shouldn't have a lot of blow by, I shouldn't have a lot of oil consumption. I did hone all of the cylinders uh, just to improve, um, I guess, letting the rings seat. And they say it helps with oil as well to prevent uh, the oil from going into the combustion chamber oil ring works better with uh, a cross hatch that's it uh, this is my contribution to charity hopefully this video will help you a little bit um, first thing I did was to take the inside fender off take the tire off and um, oil pan valve cover intake manifold exhaust manifold thermostat housing a couple of electrical plugs the throttle body does not have to be, does not have to come off. You can just move that out of the way with the intake manifold. I did not, as you can see, I did not remove my bumper. I did not remove the driver's side headlight. I only removed the passenger side headlight to gain access to uh, the motor and the motor mount. So I think I pretty much removed as little as possible. I did also have to um, disconnect the exhaust and lower the exhaust in order to um, to free up the exhaust manifold so I could move it out of the way. That's it. Good luck. Have fun.